Getting right to it again today. This, I think, is two episodes in a row why I haven't had any mundane things to talk about. Little uh, stupid things that are happening in my life. No stories, no subplots, no... Uh, what, do you, what do you call it? Pretense or pretext? I'm not sure. I think nothing going... It's just, it's been really hot here where I live. We're, uh, we had a mini, mini rainy season. And uh, the last week or so has been around 35 degrees. It's 35 degrees again today. It's supposed to be 35 and 36 and no rain for the next week and a half. Other than that, I don't really have anything to say. Uh, just like with the last one, Motorhead, I'm going to boom, I'm going to hit you right in the face. I'm going to get right to it because I have nothing else to talk about. And why do you need anything else? You're here for, uh, for music, talk, and opinion. And that's what I'm going to give to you today. And today I'm going to talk about B.I.B. That's back in black for ACDC. A lot of letters in today's episodes. Um, my, where do I start with ACDC? One of the early bands that I was into, and I've talked about this in, in a lot of these recent episodes uh, with, with the, these records that I've got recently. Say it along with me. Ozzy, Diary of a Madman, Black Sabbath, Paranoid, uh, Van Halen, Fair Warning. A little bit later, um, Iron Maiden, The Number of the Beast, Motley Crue, Shout the Devil. Uh, of course, this is not even taking into account Kiss, uh, you know, years earlier. But but uh, I kind of sometimes forget that ACDC was one of the, maybe the second or third band that I was into after Kiss. And I'm not sure if I got Paranoid or Black, Back in Black first. They were both around the same time, sometime in, in 1980. I remember these things from... I, I think the reason I have a good memory for things like this is if you can cut your life into sections and, and the sections, you know, if you lived in different uh, houses or, or different neighborhoods or different cities like I did, Montreal and then Toronto. Anyway, I can remember 1980 um, because where I lived and I did have Paranoid and Back in Black around the same time. And I think the reason I kind of forget about ACDC was because after Back in Black was for those about to rock, which I was into, and Flick of the Switch, which I bought, but I never really got into them. And after that, I pretty much gave up on ACDC until the last ACDC album I bought since Flick of the Switch was, was the last one, Power Up, that came out a couple of years ago. Um, Fly on the Wall and everything, Razor's Edge and uh, any, you know, all those play ball and that stuff. I never bought that. So I kind of forgot, and ACDC fell out of favor with me, which maybe I'll talk about. That's a clue that I'm going to talk about another ACDC album at some point. Um, but maybe I'll talk about my falling out with ACDC. But for now, Back in Black was a enormously uh, formative album in my life, along with First Kiss and then uh, Black Sabbath, Paranoid. This was the music that at this time, yes, ACDC was considered... In my world, and I think in everybody's world back then, ACDC was heavy metal. Uh, they were, you know, they, they had uh, Hell's Bells and Satan's Calling to You. And I had Iron Maiden, The Number of the Beast, I guess two years later. And uh, Bruce Dickinson in um, The Number of the Beast sang, um, uh, uh, what does he say? What's the line with Satan in The Number of the Beast? I'm coming back, I will return. And I'll possess your body and I'll make you burn. Uh, no, where, where, does he, where does Bruce Dickinson mention Satan in The Number of the Beast? He, he name checks Satan. Um, uh, I have the uh, Satan, Satan. I don't know. And Black Sabbath in, in War Pigs had Satan laughing spreads his wings. So I think this I knew at a very young age, 10, 12 years old, that this was the kind of music that I liked. And ACDC was on a lot of parents' shit lists including mine. My mother didn't like ACDC, you know, Hell's Bells, and uh, a little bit later with the number of the beast, and Motley Crue, I'd shout at the devil, and um, I guess Black Sabbath didn't have Satan in their song titles, but Ozzy mentioned uh, Satan laughing spreads his wings, as I said, in War Pigs, and uh, for me, that was heavy metal, and I knew that that was the kind of music that I liked. Uh, so the, the amazing thing about this album, well, there are a lot of things amazing about it, and I'm not sure, it, it might be... I, I'm not sure if it's my favorite ACDC album or not. It's possible. It's this one or it depends how you break them down. Maybe one or two other ones um, are potential, uh, potential, uh, how would I say this, have potential to be at my coveted number one spot 
of, uh, of ACDC albums. Uh, but a, a couple of amazing things about this was it, it came out in 1980. Bon Scott died in 1980. I think Bon Scott died in January, maybe February 1980. I don't know. And this album came out around summer of 1980. So amazing to think that in around a six month period or less, their singer died. They, they auditioned and got a new singer and wrote and recorded a new album, Back in Black, and put it out in, in less than six months. Maybe, maybe four, I don't know how long it was. Let's say six months anyway. That's just incredible. Now bands take, you know, seven years between albums with nobody, you know, nobody dying. It just takes them a long time. Obviously a very, very different, uh, different musical climate now and musical world. Uh, the other thing is this album, I'm not sure, maybe uh, I should check these things. Is it possible that Back in Black is the best-selling band album of all time that's not a greatest hits? Obviously, Thriller is number one worldwide. Um, I'm not sure if this is worldwide or in the US by the, the RIAA, the Recording Industry Association of America. Um, Thriller's number one. I think the Eagles' greatest hits, volume one, I guess it is, or volume two, whatever is, is second but that's a compilation album. It's possible that, that Back in Black is the all-time greatest selling uh, band album ever by a, by a band, not a solo artist or, or a greatest hits compilation. And it's amazing because it kind of, where, how did that happen? When, when in 1980, when I was listening to it, it was popular. And when uh, For Those About to Rock came out, ACDC was still popular, but ACDC started to decline they, they had, I think they had a big drop off in popularity in 85, I guess by flying the wall. They were, they were kind of the old guys at that point. They were losing their luster. A lot of people lost interest in ACDC. And what was after um, flying the wall? Was it blow up your video? There's something else in between. They, they kind of, you know, muddled. And then uh, Razor's Edge came out in 90 or 91 and that, you know, Thunderstruck was, was huge. And uh, I don't know if that, you know, made, where did, where did Back in Black come from that all of a sudden sold 20, 22, 25, 26 million copies? I don't know how many. That's in the U.S. Uh, so, so it really exploded at some point. Um, but I, I love it. And it's uh, very, very different because Bon Scott had died you know, quite shortly before the album came out, there's there's always been rumors or speculation about whether he, whether Bon Scott had anything to do with Back in Black or not. I don't know, I guess, you know, I don't think anybody is has any right to say, except ACDC has said no, that, that he had nothing to do. There have been rumors for years that there were demos with uh, Bon Scott playing, uh, singing on them, or that he wrote lyrics. And I've seen people argue saying there's no way he wrote lyrics because the lyrics were so different than what he wrote. Uh, and I'm not sure about that. For example, people have said that, you know, he wrote about hell before. Hell ain't a bad place to be and the highway to hell. And um, uh, what else had hell? But they were kind of fun songs, whereas Hell's Bells was about hell, but it was more serious. Uh, that there's no way Bon Scott would have written a song like Hell's Bells because it, it was too serious. I've heard that argument. Um, but th there's no reason to believe that's true. People change and people write about different things and people like different things and have different different interests. So, I mean, I think if, if ACDC themselves says that, uh, that Bon Scott had nothing to do with Back in Black, I guess you have to take them at their word. Uh, they, they don't seem like, you know, these, this is not Paul Stanley and Gene Simmons who have never said an honest word in their lives, at least not since Kiss has been a band, I don't think. Um, so I don't know. But amazing that how, how different Back in Black is from, from the Bon Scott era, all the albums. Uh, th this album is more, it's not, I mean, ACDC is not a heavy album, although at the time I thought they were, or sorry, not a heavy band. But this, this album sounds more, uh, it sounds darker, more sinister. Most, uh, there's a couple of songs, maybe not. But Hell's Bells, that, that has a very sinister tone to it. Uh, very serious lyrically and everything. I'll, I'll get to the track by track. Uh, aren't you excited? And it, it's, it's hard to imagine Bon Scott singing on these songs as they are. Again, I'm not saying that I know he didn't sing on it because they're so different. 
I'm just saying when I when I hear these songs, I, I just can't imagine. I would love to hear them. I mean, if if uh, obviously if that had, had happened, uh, if Bon Scott recorded vocals for this album, I would love to hear. Have, I would love to have heard that. But um, I think if nothing has come out at this point, it's because nothing exists. Yeah. So I think that's it. So I will get to it now. This uh, back in black is in, in here. You can see this is a double box. This came with four records. I opened this one last week for uh, Shout at the Devil. I, I briefly took Shout at the Devil out. So the box is already open, and there are three, two or three, how many records in here? There are three more records in here. Two like this, and one like this, a thin one. Which one is back in black? This one in my hand. So I'll, I'll, uh, I'll put this down here. Uh, so this is, this is back in black right there. There it is. And uh, I'm excited to, to, to have this. Again, a, a huge album for me. It really shaped my musical tastes for the years to come. And um, oh yeah, there's the garbage truck. It's late. It's, uh, it's after 3 o'clock. It usually comes around 10 o'clock. Isn't that exciting that, that, that the garbage truck is coming like five hours later? Uh, now this, I remember, and I did have this on CD. Uh, the record, I remember the, the ACDC logo was embossed. That means you could feel it. It had texture. Um, let's see if, uh, and this was a reissue that came out in, I don't know, 2000. 2009 I'm not sure uh, let's check it out why do, why do people say let's I'm gonna check it out you're, you're just watching you're along for the ride all right there it is no uh, no hype sticker very simple oh look at that this is this is really nice to look at very uh, um, very stark very basic and is it yes it is ah the logo and the back in black, it is embossed. I guess, uh, I guess you can't see that. Um, oh, very cool. I'm getting excited that I, can, that I can feel something. It feels like a blister when, you, when your skin gets blistered. Uh, that doesn't happen to me because I wear sunscreen. Uh, all right, very nice. Oh, this is cool to have. Yeah, a very, a very appropriate album for, uh, for the one that came out after, after Bon Scott died. And it looks like I have I have my knife here. It whoops. It it looks like I won't need it. It looks like this has. Can I just lift this uh, plastic? I don't need to cut it. I think. Oh, I do. Look at that. I like that. Very very simple. No tools needed for the pack for the uh, the box or the record. Oh, this is beautiful. A, a really nice. Really, really nice matte finish. Kind of, kind of, you know, it's, it's funny how, how I love Iron Maiden and Kiss and Motorhead and, uh, you know, th these bands with great album covers. And ACDC had some good ones too, but this is, is so basic, but it's also so great. And uh, can, you, can you catch the light? Uh, is the light catching and showing the embossing? I don't know. Um... Inside was, I remember, there were no lyrics with this. I do remember that. Uh, one side was, uh, I think, one picture of each of them, of the five of them on one side. The other side, I can't remember. Uh, definitely no lyrics, but let's see. Ah, okay. Ah, this, oh, this is a little bit different. This is, well, this is what it looks like. So, so there's one side. This is totally different from... Um, from, from when I got the record. This is obviously, the copyright date here is 19, uh, originally 1980, and 2000, it's so small. It looks like 2003. Um, and it has, ah, it has a little, a little history there. I guess this is better than, uh, and it continues there, written by David Frick. I think he was a Rolling Stone writer in January 2003. So, um, and it's got, yeah, it's got pictures from the tour. And, all right, ah, so that's actually a little bit better. Oh, and I remember the actual record, the, the label on the record was the classic Atlantic logo. Rat had, all the Rat albums had that. 
It was the um, it was green at the top, red at the bottom, and a, a, a narrow white stripe or white line across the middle. I think this won't be that anymore. Everybody knows that Atlantic label, right? No, it's not. It's this. I had a lot of those uh, Atlantic records. Records. All right. Oh, very cool. I'm happy to have this in my, in my uh, possession again. Um, and I think that's it. And I'll go through it track by track now. Is, is it time for that? I think it is. I'll put this back. Is this in the right order? It's not. And again, I've always wondered that. This has Back in Black first. Back in Black was the first song on side two. Hell's Bells was first. And this has Rock and Roll Ain't Night, Noise Pollution sixth. Rock and Roll Ain't Night, Noise Pollution is down there. And the second song is Shoot to Thrill. Um, anyway, so it's not out of order. So I'll, I'll do these if I, I don't know if I can remember the order. Uh, Hell's Bells, Shoot to Thrill. What do you do for money, honey? Giving the dog a bone. I can't remember. Um, so no, I'll use the record. So I do know that Hell's Bells is first. And as I mentioned, what a sinister song that was. And it's, it's uh, ACDC. I talked about Van Halen's punctuation before, how they have a lot of uh, uh, exclamation points and double exclamation points and quotation marks. ACDC had a lot of grammar mistakes. Hell's Bells, and it, it was never corrected. I guess what's the point, or what was the point at, at this point? Um, it's Hell's uh, uh, plural, H-E-L-L-S. It should be Hell apostrophe s as a possessive adjective it's the bells that belong to hell do you understand um i think even when i was a kid i don't think it bothered me but i knew that now it bugs the hell out of me uh so hell's bells very very sinister song you know the bell tolling uh and the, the way that guitar kind of creeps in um uh, i'm rolling thunder pow and rain i'm coming on like a hurricane my lightnings flash in across the sky. You're only young, but you're gonna die. And what a what a wailing voice Brian Johnson had. I, I, I mean, even when I was a kid, I thought this guy is just screaming. He just sounds so uh, so angry and aggressive, and it just fit the the music so perfectly. Um, and I actually prefer Bon Scott as an era, um, which has only been in the last five or six or seven years. I was always a Brian Johnson guy. Um, with uh, a couple of exceptions. Overall, I would take the Bon Scott albums over the, the Brian Johnson albums. But uh, man, Brian Johnson could wail back then. And, and even, uh, I don't know how he is now live, but uh, man, oh man, what a, what a strong, powerful voice. Just always on, on 100. Amazing. Um, what was after uh, Hell's Bells? Was it Shoot to Thrill was second? Let me check. Yeah, Shoot to Thrill. Um, -na 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 -na. And then the guitar kind of hangs there. Dun -dun 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 Shoot to Thrill, Play to Kill. Too many women on too many pills. Shoot to Thrill. I got my gun at the ready, gonna fire at will. And I, I never, it, I didn't learn ACDC lyrics nearly as well as I should have. And I know the music as well as anything. But I think because they didn't, and Van Halen too, as much as I love Van Halen, I was at a hard time with their lyrics. I think the way David Lee Roth sang and, uh, you know, the way Brian Johnson sang and because their albums had no lyrics. Um, I, I still now, I don't, I'll talk about something when I get to Back in Black, the song about lyrics. Uh, but yeah, Shoot to Thrill, great song. Very, very energetic. Um, -na 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 -na, shoot to Thrill. No, I already said that. All right, uh, what was next? Was it, uh, What Do You Do for Money, Honey is next? Yes, uh, great, great song. What do you do for money, honey? How do you get your kicks? Broken Teeth, one of my favorite, at least if you call them modern bands, they've been around now for 24 years. Um, they did a great, great cover of uh, What Do You Do for Money, Honey? Uh, and I have a Broken Teeth tattoo there. Oh my God. If you don't know Broken Teeth, and if you like ACDC especially, um, maybe you'd hate Broken Teeth. Maybe they're too close to ACDC for you. But I, I love uh, Broken Teeth. So they did a cover of um, What Do You Do For Money, Honey? And Jason McMaster sings um, 
as good as Brian Johnson. He, he, Brian Johnson, he just wails. Jason just wails on that. Um, standing in the, and also another reason I think why I didn't get into ACDC lyrics, maybe because they were um, uh, Australian. I, at the time, I remember, I thought they were English. I thought they were British. They used maybe some words I didn't know. Standing in the queue just to spend the night with you. I, I, what, I thought, what the hell is a queue? And I'm not even sure I knew that he was saying the word queue. Um, standing in the uh, standing in the queue just to spend the night with you. Um, no idea what a queue was. I know now. Um, but yeah, uh, what do you do for money, honey? Great song. Uh, what was after that? I gotta keep checking. Maybe I can remember two in advance. Uh, giving the dog a bone. Another another uh, grammatically or the wrong word. It's there are actually two mistakes here. It should be. Given the dog a bone, um, no, I, I guess, ah, no, you know what? Maybe they did, yeah, you know what? If I remember correctly, the original album and maybe the CD had G-I-V-E-N, like the past participle of the verb give, and this is G-I-V-I-N, which is still wrong. Well, there should be an apostrophe at the end or a G. Um, I'm gonna have to go back and check that G I V E N, which which is uh, even even more egregiously wrong than than this. Um, but that that that's a good one too. All this I I like every song on here. I would even say I love every song on here. Uh, I'm just a giving a dog a bone, giving a dog a bone. Um, uh, yeah, that's a good one. And God, I have to check again. I have a uh, I can't remember two songs ahead. Was it? Oh, let me put my love into you. Let me put my love into you, babe. Um, uh, th this was another one when he said, uh, let me, uh, in the chorus, let me cut your cake with my knife. Hey, I was 10 years old when I was listening to this album. I had no idea what that meant. Let me cut your cake with my knife. Ow! And I guess um, the cake would be the vagina and the knife would be a penis. So let me cut your cake with my knife. I think he was saying, let me put my penis into your vagina. Maybe I'm reading too much into it. Maybe he means something else, but that's how I, uh, that's how I um, interpret, let me put my love into you. Let me put my love into you, babe. Um, again, a great song. Uh, side two, I know that one starts with Back in Black. Now, what I was going to say earlier about this, I have no idea what the lyrics to Back in Black are. I've been listening to this song for, what's that now, 43 years. I still don't know most of what he says. When this song, you know, comes on or when I hear it, I'm kind of singing along. I just kind of make up, they're not even words. I guess it's, I'm almost like scat, um, you know. Um, now, how does it start? Uh, back in Black, I hit the sack. It's been too long. I'm glad to be back. Well, I let news from the news that's taking me that, 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 that's getting me high. Forget the hearse because I'll never die. Now, again, when I was a kid, I don't know what a hearse was. Forget the hearse because I'll never die. I got nine lives, cat's eyes, abusing everyone, da, 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 because I'm back. Hey, 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 hey. Uh, when I'm, um, no idea what he's saying in, in most of that song. And then what's the second verse? Um, um, uh, with a book, with a book, I'm a power pack. Everything that comes before, I'm a power pack. Don't have a clue what he's singing. Uh, ooh, with the gang. I don't know what he's saying between power pack and whatever with the gang. Uh, that's can't even have so the have a man, I'm a have a man. So look at me now, something, something. I, I have no idea what he's saying, and I know Google is, uh, is is very useful for these kinds of things. But I think at this point, I don't, really, I don't know if I could even learn the lyrics. I've been just kind of making them up in my head for 43 years. Uh, after Back in Black, uh, what is it? You Shook Me All Night Long. Now this, this is a little bit of an odd song. This to me is, um, I, I would say by far, the, the, the most fun song on the album. As I said, it's a little bit dark and sinister. And, you know, kind of serious, um, musically and lyrically, I think You Shook Me All Night Long 
could have been. I'm not saying it is, but I'm saying this is the one that I could imagine Bon Scott singing more than any of the other ones. And it's, I would say by far their most popular song, their most well-known song. I don't even think it's close to being their signature song. That would be, God, I mean, it could be, I don't know, Hell's Bells, even Thunderstruck could be, the, this It's not my favorite, but um, Hell's Bells, Thunderstruck, TNT, for those about to rock, maybe is their uh, signature song. Um, uh, but yeah, um, You Shook Me All Night Long just became much, much later. I think it was, it was on that soundtrack of uh, Maximum Overdrive in, when was that, 88 or 89, 90, somewhere around there. I think it, it blew up after that. It was already fairly big at this time. There was a video for it, but I think it took off in the late 80s or early 90s. You couldn't get away from that song at bars, strip clubs, um, sporting events, guys driving past your house listening to music. There was a good chance if they were doing that, they were probably listening to um, uh, You Shook Me All Night Long. It's a great song. I loved it at the time. And I'm just really, really tired of it now. I can still enjoy it, but I don't love it um, like I did 43 years ago. Next is... Have a drink on me. This is another one. I had no idea what the lyrics were. Sour mash and cheap wine. I, again, at 10 years old, I don't know what the hell sour mash is. And uh, tequila white lightning. I'm sure I didn't know what tequila was also when I was 10 years old. Um, forget about the chip. I didn't know what, I guess I knew, I knew that he was saying forget about the chip, but I didn't know what a chip meant. Um, I guess lyrically that, that's a, that could be a, a Bon Scott song too. Again, I'm not saying that it is. But just, you know, putting, putting them together. I could see Bon Scott singing uh, uh, Have a Drink on Me. And what, what's left? Two, a couple more? Two more. Shake a leg, shake a leg, shake a leg. Shake your head, shake a leg. Wake that dead, shake a leg, get down in. Shake a leg, da na na da da na that, ah, that, Is that a favorite, shake a leg? Maybe, that's uh, very, very energetic. And by the way, ACDC is maybe one of the best band names ever. I would say ACDC, Black Sabbath, Rusty Eye, who I talked about the other day. That's a great name. Soundgarden, I think is a great name for a band. Faith No More. Um, but ACDC is, is just a very, very appropriate name for this band. Uh, what did I talk about? Oh yeah, uh, was this Shake a Leg? Yeah, Shake a Leg is just full of energy. Great, great song. Uh, and the last song is Rock and Roll Ain't Noise Pollution. This was always my favorite when I was a kid. Um, rock and Roll, I think I just like that kind of slow, quiet, a little bit of a spoken word introduction. Um, you hear Brian Johnson, um, you hear him taking out a cigarette lighter and lighting a cigarette and inhaling and then, uh, hey now you middlemen. Is that what he says? See, I don't even know. Hey now you middlemen, throw away your fancy clothes. And while you're out there sitting on a fence, uh, so get off your ass and come down here. Because rock and roll ain't no riddle, man. To me, it makes good, good sense. Oh, man, what a great song. Rock and roll ain't noise pollution. I think I just, when I was a kid, I just really liked the, the, the concept of uh, rock and roll being, being noise pollution. Uh, that, that's still maybe a favorite. Uh, hard to pick a favorite. Um... I mean, there's not one that stands out as being a favorite. And that's not because there's not one that's so great. It's because they're all great. There's not one that stands out. There's also not one that I can say, I don't really like this song. I think they're all excellent songs. Um, so that's it for, for Back in Black. And is there a better band that, just better band, that's it. I was going to say something else, Some you know, give it additional... Uh, you know, caveats or something or, or conditions, but is there a better band than ACDC? They're not my personal favorite band, but uh, man, I, I mean, they're, they're just a, a real toe-tapping band, energetic, Bon Scott, Brian Johnson, whatever. Their, their songs make you, you know, tap, tap your head and uh, tap your foot and, and nod your head. And, uh, you know, it, it's good at a party, at a bar, driving sports, anything like that. ACDC music is always appropriate. Nobody really hates ACDC, I, I don't think. I think like, um, I mean, at least people who like hard rock or heavy metal, and even maybe people who just like music in general, 
ACDC, here's what I want to say. I think ACDC is maybe more, more beloved than any other band. You know, Metallica is super popular, but a lot of people really hate Metallica too. Um, but it, I think it seems rare that, that people have anything bad to say about ACDC, uh, including me. Although I did in the, in the 80s. I had a lot of bad things to say about ACDC. Um, so there it is, ACDC, Back in Black, a, a real, real, real classic album for me. And uh, as I've said with some of the other ones, I'm very happy to have it back in my life, Back in Black.